Could we ask the congregation please stand? The congregation may be seated. On behalf of the Family Circle, I'd like to welcome you to this special service to remember and give thanks for the life of Mrs. Glenda McGill. I know that the family deeply appreciate your presence here and your support even over these last number of days. In 121st Psalm, the Psalm has asked the question, from whence cometh my help? And in answering his own question, he said, My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. While other helpers may feel, the Lord never feels. He gives the oil of joy for mourning, and he gives the garment of praise for heaviness. And therefore we gather here this afternoon to seek the Lord's presence and to seek his comfort for you in this time of trouble. On behalf of the session and congregation of Lurgan Free Presbyterian Church, where Mrs. McGill was a member, I want to express to the family our heartfelt sympathy. We express our sympathy to her husband, Nat, uh, to her daughter, Barbara, to her sons, Ian, Alan, and Stephen, uh, to her daughters-in-law, Ruth and Sharon, to her son-in-law, David, to her grandchildren, and also to her great-grandchildren and to her brother Jim, and to the wider family circle. And as a congregation, I want to assure you of our thoughts and of our prayers, not just today, but also in the days that lie ahead. Let us just bow together in a word of prayer and seek the Lord's face. Our gracious God and eternal Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for the words of the psalmist. We thank Thee that Thou art our refuge and that thou art our help in the time of trouble. And we recognize that this is, for the family, a time of trouble. And Lord, as we come before thee, we thank you even for our sister, Mrs. McGill. We thank thee that we are in this place today, and it is fitting, because how she loved the house of God. She loved to be here in the Sabbath day. She loved to be in the place of prayer, seeking thy face. And we come today and we give thee thanks for that day many years ago when she trusted thee as her own and personal Savior. We thank thee that she passed from death unto life. And Lord, we rejoice that not only did she love thee, but we thank thee that she lived for thee. And we thank you today for her life, for her testimony. We thank thee for her service even to thee. And we thank thee most of all that while she is absent from the body, that she is with thee, which is even far, far better. And Lord, as we come today, we do remember uh, the family member not, and we pray, Lord, that thou wouldst be with them, and that thou wouldst give them help and grace at this time. Member Barbara, Ian, Alan, and Stephen, and the wider family circle, we ask, Lord, that Thou wouldst put Thine arms of love around them, and that Thou wouldst bear them up, even at this time. And Lord, we ask that today that Thou wouldst be with us in this service. We recognize it is Thy presence that maketh the feast. And so we ask that Thou wouldst come and stand in our midst, that Thou wouldst comfort us through Thy Word, and that Thou wouldst speak to our hearts. We ask, Lord, that Thou wouldst help us even to number our days, and to be ready for that day when we receive that call to leave this scene of time and to stand before thee. And so, Lord, we commit ourselves and this service now into thine hands, praying that thou wouldst be with us and that thou wouldst be our help. For without thee we can do nothing. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Let us worship God in singing together the first hymn in the order of service. I am going to a city where the streets with gold are laid, where the tree of life is blooming and the roses never fade. The next four lines are the chorus. They're in italics. Uh, so after every verse, we will sing uh, that chorus again. We'll stand while we sing. <laughs> be seated. On behalf of the family, can I say a a word of thanks uh, to the doctors and nurses of Craig Avenue Area Hospital for their diligent care of Mrs. McGill, and also the carers from Anne's Care Home, the Mari Curry nurses and carers, the district nurses, and the district sister. Uh, They made it possible for Mrs. McGill to spend her last days in her own home. And I know that the family deeply appreciated their diligence and their care uh, for her. Could I also thank you for coming today? I know that means a great deal uh, to the family. And can I also say a very special word of welcome today uh, to Mrs. McGill's niece, Michelle, and to her family. Uh, They have traveled the whole way over from Hull uh, to be here uh, today, and I know that their presence means an awful lot to Nat and to the immediate family. After the service, there will be a cup of tea in the church hall. If you're not going to the graveside, uh, just after the service, make your way through here to the back uh, hall. If you are going to the graveside, and you're very welcome to come, Uh, then come back to the church uh, for a cup of tea uh, afterwards. At this stage of the service, I'm going to ask Mrs. McGill's son, Stephen, to come and to pay a tribute uh, to his mum.
dad asked me to say a few words today. Just about my mum. I'm glad he didn't ask me to sing because in my mum's eyes, my brother Ian was always the best singer. My mum was a very strong woman who always put her family in front of herself. She was a selfless woman who always stood up for her values and morals. She inherited my granda's work ethics. She could paint, wallpaper, tile, stitch, knit, and even drive lorries. In fact, one day she drove one of them up the north coast, and this was before power steering was even invented. She used to run our house like a chief executive of a company, managing the finances, controlling the costs, keeping the morale up, and disciplining us who were misbehaving, which was quite often. My mom loved her parents. She talked about her daddy every day and what an inspiration he was. She loved her sisters, Olive and Margaret, and had a soft spot for her baby brother, Jim, who used to keep a close eye on right until her passing. She loved all of her children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren equally, and taught us the values and importance of family. But the biggest Hollywood love story is the love my mom had with my dad. For over 60 years, they did everything together. They were best friends. In fact, some of my mom's final words to my dad was to ask him for a wee kiss. They held hands everywhere like a couple of love-struck teenagers. As my mom's dementia worsened over the last few months, my dad had to really look after her. He was not going to leave her or let her leave the family home. Thank you, Dad. He never complained. He just said it was his duty as a husband and was going to look after his wife until death shall you part. To the world, she was our mom, but to us, she was our world. Today, I will not lose my mom. Again, an angel in our hearts, thoughts, and prayers. Love you, Mum. Could I thank Stephen for making that touching tribute? I know it's not easy. I was in that position just a year ago and speaking at my dad's funeral, and I know it's not easy, and you did your mum proud and we thank you for paying that tribute to her. Let us hear the word of God as is found in the 46th Psalm. The psalm has said, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolation he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Then the prophet speaking in Isaiah chapter 32, he said, Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment. A man shall be as an hiding place from the wind, and a covert from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, 
as the shadow of a great rock and a weary land. And the eyes of them that shall see shall not be dim, and the ears of them that hear shall hearken. Amen. We know that God will bless the reading of his own precious word to each of our hearts. We're gathered here this afternoon to remember and to give thanks for the life of Mrs. Glenda McGill. She was born in Banbridge Hospital on the 12th of January, 1937, and spent her early days in the family home, which was in Lawrence Town. Later, the family, because of work, uh, they moved to Blairay. In the early 1960s, work was scarce here in Lurgan, and as a consequence, Nat moved to London. And it was in Holborn Baptist Church in London that Nat and Glenda were married in 1963. That's over 60 years ago. They had a long and they had a very, very happy marriage. Nat working at that time for British Real, he then moved up into Lancashire, and it was while there uh, that Barbara was born. They eventually returned to Lurgan. The family then grew rapidly uh, with the birth of the twins and then of another son. And with the birth of Ian, Alan, and Stephen, the family was complete. Her family meant everything to Mrs. McGill. She not only loved her children, but she doted on her grandchildren and also on her great-grandchildren. They were all very precious to her, and I know that they brought much pleasure and they brought much joy even to her heart. She spent most of her working life in the optical factory in Lurgan, and when it closed, she then moved to Boxmoor in Dollingstown, and she worked there until retirement. Of course, it was not all work. Uh, she and Nat loved their holidays, and they liked to travel and as well as going to Blackpool most years, they also holidayed in Spain, and they also visited the Holy Land, and they walked the streets of Jerusalem. She also traveled on different occasions to visit her sister, uh, who lived in Zimbabwe. In 1967, she and Nat attended a tent mission held on the Brownstown Road. The evangelist on that occasion was Dr. Paisley, and in those meetings, she coming under conviction as she came to trust Christ as her own and personal Savior. That was on the last Sunday of June in 1967. She had many talents, and getting saved, she began to use those talents for the Lord. She loved flower arranging, and she had a great talent for it. She attended several flower arranging classes, and up until a couple of years ago, she picked and she arranged the flowers here in the church. She loving the house of God, she by her flower arranging, she added her own touch, bringing uh, my brightness and beauty to the house of God. She was also uh, my a great help in decorating the church uh, for the harvest services as well. My her other talent was her voice and she, putting that to good use, uh, she sang with the Bethel singers. And together, they not only sang here in the church and in other churches, but they would have sang in nursing homes and in several mission halls as well. She also had another very important job, not only to sing, but she was often responsible for getting the singers there and getting them back home safely. And sadly, Another member of the Bethel Singers, Mrs. Baird, uh, who she sang with, passed away uh, last evening. In many ways, uh, Mrs. McGill was a quiet woman, but she was also a busy woman. She was always faithful in her attendance at the means of grace. She was in church every Sunday morning and every Sunday evening uh, up until she took on well. And more than that, she was always faithful in the place of prayer. And I know that if you're not saved here today, then you were upon her heart, and she would have prayed for you. And she longed that you might come to know her Lord and her Savior. While she was unable to be in the house of God last Sunday morning, yet just as we were leaving the prayer meeting to come out here to commence the morning service, she went to be with her Lord and her Savior. 
She no longer sees through a glass darkly, but today she looks full in the Savior's wonderful face. And while we do not sorrow today as those who have no hope, nevertheless, we do sorrow. As a church, we will miss her. And as a family, you will miss her even more and in many different ways. And the storms of grief raging, the prophet gives to us a wonderful promise. He's speaking of the Lord. He said in Isaiah 32 and in the verse 2, He shall be as an hiding place from the wind and a covert from the tempest, as rivers of waters in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. And just for a few moments this afternoon, I want to draw your attention to these words we see here concerning Christ, firstly, that he is a refuge. In this verse, the prophet speaks not only of dry places and of winds, but of tempests. They sweeping across their lives, threatening devastation and desolation. He describes the Lord there in that verse 2 as a covert. The particular word used here in the original language refers to a secret place or to a hiding place. And as such, they entering into him, he was indicating that they would be hidden. Not only would their enemies be no longer able to find them, but the storms would be no longer able to smite them, and the sun would no longer be able to scorch them. They would find in him my refuge. And the Lord, being a hiding place, he is not only a refuge from the storms of life, but he is also a refuge in the storms of death. In him alone there is safety and there is solace. Indeed, the apostle Paul, reminding the Roman believers of that, he said in Romans 8, verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. And you notice there the words, in Christ. And they stepping by faith into Christ, he said there would be no condemnation. That little word, no, there is exceedingly strong. And as such, it could be read, no, no, not a bit, not even the slightest tinge of condemnation. In other words, the storms of divine wrath could no longer find them, nor could it touch them. You see, in Jesus Christ, there is not only salvation, there is shelter, shelter in the storms of despair, but also shelter in the storms of death. The hymn writer said, a shade by day, defense by night, a shelter in the time of storm, no fears alarm, no foes affright, a shelter in the time of storm. You see, you could be beside a castle, and yet being caught in a terrible storm, you could still perish. It's not enough to examine the castle, but if you're going to be safe, you've got to enter into the castle. And realizing that, Mrs. McGill, over 50 years ago, she entered into Christ. She trusted him as her own and personal Savior. And while she was not exempt from the storms of sickness and the storms of death, yet in Christ she found shelter and solace. Breathing her last, there was for her no more condemnation. And as such death for Mrs. McGill, it held no fear. And today, if only you enter into Christ, if only you trust Him as your own and personal Savior, you will find shelter in the storms of sorrow. But more than that, you will find shelter in the storms of death and in the storms of judgment. They will no longer be able to touch you or to harm you. If your heart is overwhelmed, then I urge you today, run to Christ. He is a cover. He is a place of refuge. In him, we find shelter. More than that, we notice he is a river. One image failing to set forth the fullness of Christ. The prophet then likened him in verse 2 to rivers of water in a dry place. The river winding its way through the dry and desolate landscape it's soaking into the ground, it causing the seedling to burst forth and the flower to bloom. By its stream, it brings forth life and beauty. 
And by putting the word river here in the plural, he was reminding them that in Christ there was not only a vast supply, but there was a varied supply, a supply that could meet their every need. You see, in Christ there's not only an abundance of blessing, but there is an assortment of blessing. There is in him everything the soul could ever need. Indeed, the prophet later inviting the people to come to the Savior without money and offering salvation without price. He said in Isaiah 55, verse 2, Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good. And he reminded them that unlike the pleasures of time, which are unable to fill and unable to satisfy, the Lord was true bread, as well as satisfying them. He would make them spiritually fat. In Christ, there is a fullness that can never be exhausted. He is able to meet every need. Henry William Baker, who lived in the 19th century, taking up his pen, he wrote, The king of love my shepherd is, whose goodness faileth never. I nothing lacketh, I am his, and he is mine forever. And you know, Mrs. McGill coming to Christ, she didn't go back to the old broken cisterns of this world. Why? Because she drinking of the water of salvation My, she was satisfied. My, he met her every need. So much so that she loved to sing about the Savior. She loved to sing of the Lord who had redeemed her by his grace. And today he is able to meet your need, whatever your need is. He gives the oil of joy for mourning, the garments of praise for heaviness. In weakness he gives strength. In confusion he gives wisdom. He is a great river. And whatever your need is, Christ can meet that need if only you enter in, if only you trust him. But finally, notice he is a rock. In verse 2, he describes him as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. And you notice he describes the Lord not merely as a rock, but as a great rock. A great rock being strong and heavy, it remains generation after generation. While the trees are rounded, wither and die, it remains steadfast. And no matter the angle of the sun, whether the sun is high in the sky or whether it's shining from the east or from the west, the rock always casts a shadow. In other words, he was reminding them that no matter the season, no matter the direction of the storms or the direction of the sun, my, they, they lie or are hiding themselves in him. They would find rest. They would find peace. And in Christ, our rock, there is not only release, but there's rest. Peace in the storms of life and the storms of death. Indeed, the Lord telling his disciples that soon he would be arrested and being crucified, that he was going and from them and where he was going, they could not come. And as you can imagine, their whole world caved in around them. Their hearts were heavy. And the Lord Jesus saw their despair. And turning, he said in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And he reminded them that while he would not take away the storms, he would give them peace in the storms. And unlike the peace of man, which is fickle, his peace is a peace forever. Indeed, describing the Savior, Paul said in the book of Ephesians, for he himself, that is Christ, is our peace. Christ came not to bring material prosperity. He came to bring spiritual peace, peace with God, and more than that, the peace of God. In a moment or two, we'll be leaving the church. We'll be making our way to the cemetery. And as you walk into the cemetery, you'll see all the headstones. And if you look at the headstones, you will find at the bottom of many of them the words, rest in peace. But it takes more than a tombstone to give peace. Only Christ can give peace. Only Christ can calm the troubled waters. 
bringing peace into our hearts and lives. Way back in 1876, the famous hymn writer Francis Ridley Havergale, vacationing in South Wales, she caught a very bad cold. The doctor was called, he looked at her, and he told her it didn't look good. He thought that she only had a few hours left. And hearing the news, she turned to him and she said, if I am really going, it is too good to be true. Her friends were amazed at her response. And she returning home that night, she took up her pen and she wrote the words, stayed upon Jehovah, hearts are fully blessed, finding as he promised, perfect peace and rest. Mrs. McGill, trusting Christ as her Savior, she had peace in life, but she had also peace in death. And today, more than that, she is at peace. There are no more storms, no more sickness. There are no more tears. And today, if only you trust Christ as your Savior, then you can have that peace. Peace that will enable you to smile in the face of the storms of life and to smile even in the storms of death. And I wonder today, do you have this peace? In closing, I want you to notice that where this rock was, you notice in the verse, it was in a weary land. Also notice where the rivers were, they were in a dry place. And the cover, it was in the tempest. In other words, Christ, who was their rock, their stream, their shelter, he was right beside them. He was there in the dry place and in the barren place. Christ is not a refuge afar, but he's a refuge near. He's right beside you. An atheist teacher one day my in the class arguing that there was no God. He took his piece of chalk and he wrote on the blackboard, God is nowhere. He unintentionally left a little gap between the letters W and each in nowhere. He then turned to one of the little boys and he asked him, would you read what's on the blackboard? The little boy getting up, he read, God is now here. The Lord is here. He's in the storms. He's close by. The Lord is a refuge. He is a river. He is a rock. We can say today concerning Mrs. McGill that he was her refuge, her river. He was her rock. And today she is with him, which is far better. And I wonder today, do you have that hope? Can you say he's my refuge? Have you entered into him? Have you trusted him? Is he your rock? Are you depending, building your life upon him and upon him alone? My or sister loved to sing of him. And I trust today that you might come to know her Savior and serve him even as she served him in life. We're going to close our service by singing the final hymn on her order of service, another favorite of Mrs. McGill. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. We'll stand while we sing.
Let's just remain standing for prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for thy presence. We thank thee for the words that we have been singing. We thank thee for the cross of our Savior. We rejoice that he died not for sins that he had committed because he was sinless. But we thank thee that he took the sins of his people. He died in their place that their sins might be forgiven. And Lord, we give thee thanks for that day in Mrs. McGill's life when she came to that old rugged cross and she recognized her need of thee and trusted thee as her own and personal Savior. We thank thee that that day the burden of her sin rolled away and she became a new creature in Christ. We give thee thanks today for her labors of love for thee. And we thank you, Lord, for every service that was done. And we rejoice that it was never done my reluctantly, but it was always done wholeheartedly. And we rejoice that it was not done to be seen, but it was done to bring honor and glory to thy name. And we thank thee that even on Sunday morning, my, that she exchanged that cross, my, for a crown. And we thank thee that she is with thee, which is far, far better. But Lord, be with the family. We'll miss her in so many ways. We pray that you draw alongside of them and go with them. And we pray be with us as we make our way even to the cemetery. We thank you for the food that's been provided, blessed to each of our bodies. And Lord, we pray that again that thou wouldst help us to remember we're here just for a time and to make ready to come to the foot of that old rugged cross and have our sins washed away. So hear our prayer. Be with us as we leave thy house. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. Amen.